your hitch and your A-frame assembly. So first of all with your hitch assembly, um, <coughs> back your vehicle up, you know, get it as close to the tow ball as you can. You can use your jockey wheel to, to lift or lower that if you need to. Um, once you've got the you know the tow ball underneath there, as you use the jockey wheel to lower this down uh, onto the tow ball, when it's down right onto the tow ball, that lever there pops down, it snaps down. Um, and lets you know that it's on properly um, and then this little button here actually raises up just a little bit and you get a little green ring around the edge so once that's on which I may not do that while it's off but generally it pops right down flat and then this secondary one comes right down over top pushes down um, this secondary one actually has two two little pads on the inside there that um, as you push it down it squeezes against the toe ball and that just helps with you know, anti-sway and sort of stabilisation while you're travelling. Um, when it comes time, if you want to remove it from the vehicle, lift this first one up. You then have to lift and hold this black lever up while you use the jockey wheel to take it off the tow ball. Um, if you don't hold it up, it'll just try and lift the, the vehicle and the tow ball with the caravan. Um, so just make sure that you hold that up until it's off. Right behind that, this is the, the plunger system for the braking. Um, so when you brake in the vehicle, this gets pushed back and helps brake the caravan. Um, it's also, if you keep going back, like if you're reversing, um, it'll push past the braking point and then release the brakes so you can continue reversing. Um, there's no levers or anything like that you've got to flip over. Um, so you might find that the brakes will grab for a moment, but they'll release and then you can reverse as normal. Um, also part of your hitch assembly. I can undo that. So this is your breakaway cable. So when that's all locked on, this loops around the neck of the tow ball and then clips back onto itself. So it just sits in under there like that. Um, that's designed that if this coupler ever came off, this gets pulled by the tow ball, it activates your handbrake. So it puts the handbrake on the van. Um, it is designed to brake off once it's activated the handbrake. Um, so you're not still attached to the van, but if you're getting down the motorway and that did came off, uh, come off, this gets pulled, activates the handbrake, just stops the caravan rolling freely down the motorway. Um, you can, if you want to, um, put these on the, the D-shackle point of your car. It's just personal preference, either way works just as well. Um, but the co common way is to, to loop it around. We do have a standard 7 pin trailer plug there, and so it just hooks up to your vehicle. So right behind that you've got your jockey wheel, so just a, a clockwise and anti-clockwise to, to wind that up and down. Um, just notice there there's a couple of wee grooves, um, one on this side, one on the other side. That's designed for this part of the, the arm to come right up into the air. Um, just stops it swinging around while you're travelling. And then, well, when you're hooked onto the vehicle, you can undo this lever, lift this whole jockey wheel assembly up, and the wheel will actually come and sit up about here. Um, you can tighten that up, and it just keeps it up and out of the way while you're travelling. Um, handbrake, very similar to a car. Push button there, so push it in. That's off, and then to put it on is just pull it up. Up on the front corner of your van here. Um, so first of all, this is the uh, exhaust vent and air inlet for your Truma water heater. So this part here is the travel cover, so that lifts off. Um, so if you're going to run your water heater on gas, um, remove this cover and that allows this unit here to, to take air in and um, you know, vent the exhaust as well. So you will get a bit of sort of warm to hot air coming out of there, um, that's quite normal. But if you're not using it on gas at all, Make sure this cover goes back on, it, it stops spiders and, and dirt and dust and things like that getting in there. Um, spiders really love making webs in there because it's nice and dry and warm um, and that can have a, a detrimental effect whether it ignites or not. Um, and the same with you know dirt and dust getting in there as well. Um, so just if you're not using it on gas make sure the cover's back on and especially while you're travelling um, just make sure that it covers on. So it just pops on the top there and then just clips it to the bottom. So directly behind your um, 
outlet there, this is your water housing inlet. So that little uh, lid there flips up. You've got your water hose or water pump hose there. So this part there can only go the one way, so that part goes with the wee tube there. It pushes on, and you know there's a wee sort of tab there that pushes onto the groove on the cap, and then you can just put that back to 90 degrees. It just helps lock that um, pump housing in place. You then get your your water barrel. This is the actual pump part of the, the hose. So, take your lid off, drop that right into the bottom of the barrel. Um, you do have this sort of dust and leaf cover which sits in place of the cap when it's on there. Um, but once that's in the barrel, you've got your water there, and you can then go inside and uh, turn your water pump switch on, and you should have fresh water ready to go. So on the same side as your uh, water pump uh, housing in that, uh, you've got your grey water outlets here so those wee lids flip down you've got your hoses here so they just push in just into there like that yeah you you've then got your waste caddy you take your lid off that drops in there you may need to put those back in once it's in there but once that once that's on that's your your grey water system ready to go you do have a, a full and an empty gauge down the, the end there. Um, and then under the slid here, you've got a little bungee cord there, so you can, you know, there's little eyelets on the caddy. You can tie that off to the, the rim, or there is sort of um, holes in the in the chassis rails as well if you wanted to clip it under there. Um, and then you also have this cap with a spout there. So that can go through there. And you can put that on the end, so it gives you a nice direct pour when you go to empty it. Right on the back corner of your van, on the same side as your grey water, uh, this is your fresh water filler for your toilet. So in there, just depending on the model, they generally take around 8 to 10 litres. Um, there's also a pink liquid which goes in here. Um, so that's designed to, it helps keep your pump lubricated, um, keeps the seals, you know, um, nice and fresh as well um, and also you know has a has a pleasant smell to it as well um, it is just a visual reference so when you fill that up you'll just see it sitting in the, the wee trough bit there um, and once that's full your, your fresh water side's ready to go for the toilet directly underneath that is your waste caddy side for the toilet so that opens up there this wee lever here lifts up and then you can slide your waste caddy out Top of your waste caddy here. Um, this sort of bit inside the circle there, that's operated from inside the van, um, so you don't have to, to worry about that too much. Um, this little button here, if you do have trouble getting the, the cap off, um, you can press that, it's just a little um, sort of air release valve there. Um, undo the cap. On the cap, it is a wee bit hard to see, but there is little measurements around it. So there's a blue liquid which goes in this one. Um, that's designed to help break you know the waste down and also helps you know keep things smelling nice as well um, but use you can use that as a measurer put that in there and tighten that up um, this little handle also comes out and doubles as a wheel away handle so you've got wheels on the bottom there um, just make sure when you put that in that these bits go behind those gray tabs up and then once that's all empty and ready to go it goes back in there pushes in just make sure it clicks back into that we clip there um, the only other thing really to worry about in here is just up the top here is this little drain hose so that's designed to drain the fresh water tank up the top um, so if you're going to store the van um, you know for long periods of time especially over the winter months, it's a good idea to drain that top tank. Um, one, it keeps the pump from being submerged in water for long periods of time. Um, and secondary, it also stops anything freezing or bursting and causing any damage. But yeah, just pull the wee stopper out the end there, drain that out, and then once you're done, it just sits back up on that little shelf. On your uh, entry door side of the van, uh, this here is your battery box. Oh. 
turn that to unlock it. So you've got your 12 volt battery there. Very similar to a car, you know, just a positive and a negative lead there. Um, don't really have to worry about that too much. It uh, does sort of do its own thing under there, unless you know you do either need to, to change the battery. Um, but that sort of just sits there and does its own thing. Um, in the same box, but in this wee compartment, this here is your mains power cable connection. So <coughs> to remove that, flip that little lid back. You may have to give it a bit of a wriggle, and then that'll pop off. There is a wee groove there, so that um, fits onto the, the one on the van, um, you know, only the one way. So uh, you don't, uh, don't get that mucked up, but to put it back on, it's just the same, you know, just push it, push it back up there, and then that little cap sort of acts as like a wee safety there. Um, and underneath that, if I remove that out of the way, this here is to turn the motor mover on. So you've got this little key, so that pops in there. So I've got to push it in a bit and turn it, and then round it, that angle there is on. So that supplies power to the motor mover. Um, <clears throat> so it's a good idea to turn that off when you're not using the motor mover, because they can drain you know, from the battery, um, even if they're not being used. So it just gives you a nice, you know, easy option to isolate that when you're not using it. But, this part here is the actual motor mover. So as I um, just mentioned with the wee red switch, go and turn that on. Um, you can then come in here and this part here winds right round and locks on. Um, just realised I had the wrong lever, so we'll use this one instead. Um, so grab that, pull that round and you see, you'll feel it lock into place. Um, you will need to do this on both sides, so you've got a, you know, that, that little arm is on both sides. So roll that on, once it's on, you can then go and take your handbrake off. Um, and then turn your system on, um, as long as you've got that red switch on in the battery box there. Um, and then you just, you know, you've got forward, reverse, left and right, same again in reverse. Um, and then, you know, to power off as well. Once you've got the van to where you want to go, so you've parked it where you want, make sure you put that handbrake back on first, and then you can come in, undo these, and then they just roll back over, and they'll just go right, right back until you feel them sort of click into place. So just beside your entry door, um, this is your uh, gas bottle storage locker. So that opens up there. There is actually enough storage for two bottles. One drops down in the in the back there and then you've got this one up here um, you may find you won't get a nine kilo in this one um, New Zealand bottles are slightly wider um, so they don't fit but four and a half kilo bottles fit in there quite well um, you do have just a similar you know very similar to like a barbecue style spin-on connector um, once that's on you can then go in and, and use your gas appliances just inside your door as you're going in on the left uh, this is the main controller for your 12 volt system so first of all you've got your master switch, so that turns all your 12 volt on, gives you a rough, um, uh, sorry, rust gauge on your uh, voltage of your battery. Uh, the one above it is your, sort of your master control for your lights, so that turns all your lights on and off. Um, you've got your awning light which is just out above the door here, so if you've got an awning up, um, yeah, it gives you a bit of lighting in there, but it also gives you a, you know, like an entry light as well. Um, and then this one is your water pump. So as I explained earlier with the water barrel and the pump hose, once they're connected, you can come in, turn that on. Um, initially you may need to run the water for a little bit just to get the air out of the system. Um, but once you've just got water coming through those taps, you can then shut them off and the pump will pressurise. Um, and then the pump should only run when you're using the taps. Just up here, just above your dresser area, um, this is your room heater um, controls and your main isolator switch for the main side of your uh, room heater. So turn that on and that livens up the room heater. Um, <coughs> this is sort of your main control to select power or gas. So you've got 500 watts, 1000 watts or 2000 watts um, on mains power. 
um, you can then go back to this one so this one's purely just a fan option um, so it blows ambient temperature around the, the van it's not it's not a air conditioning unit as such it just blows you know room temperature air but when that one's on there this one here needs to be turned to the little blue dot there um, and then that'll just circulate room, room temperature air this control here so right back round here is off sort of as low as you can go and then all your settings in between once you're there that's not maximum maximum is actually past this blue point to there um, it's yeah it's a strange system that you've got to go past but yeah so that that's technically three quarters and then over there is is maximum um, for gas turn that one round and then you've just got your your control from there um, you will when it's on gas and your gas is all connected this will light up um, and then you should be good to go on gas as well so just above your uh, kitchen bench this one here is the control for your water heater so to run your water heater on mains power um, come in turn that on make sure that it's full of water first um, but you turn that on and then you know it'll heat the system up um, they're not an instantaneous system so they can take you know half an hour to an hour to sort of really start heating up um, but that is to run your water heater on mains power directly above that that is to run your water heater on gas so you've got the outer ring there that turns around you'll get that green light um, you've got your, your thermostat control there so you've got 30 degrees right around to 70 um, which is there so you get that green light if you get the red light which has just popped up that's pretty much two reasons is one your gas isn't turned on or you've run out of gas and the second reason is that travel cover that I showed you on the outside earlier in the video um, that hasn't been removed so if you do get that red light just flick it back to off check that your gas is connected or turned on um, and make sure that that travel covers off and then once you've done that you can come in turn that back on you'll hear a wee click um, with which is it trying to ignite and then everything should uh, should run from there so under your seating on the same side as your kitchen um, you've got your Truma water heater uh, you don't really have to worry about that too much it is controlled by all the the controls I've showed you um, the only thing to know is this little lever here um, when you're going to store the van um, you know over winter or for long periods of time it's a good idea flick that lever up and that drains all the water out of that tank and out of your your pipes as well um, so when you flick that up um, it's a good idea to go and open the taps um, you know in the the sink in the bathroom and that'll drain all the water out of the system so it stops you know once again stops anything freezing or bursting um, and causing any damage the only thing to remember is when you go to use the van again make sure you flip that back down um, and then that'll fill the system up fine if you do happen to accidentally leave it up it's not going to cause any damage the only thing it'll do is just pump all your fresh water in your barrel outside um, it'll just pump it straight out through that drain valve um, so if you hear water running under the van just come in and flip that down under the same seating there is just a little extra um, water tank there um, so it's not connected to anything it's just a just an auxiliary tank so if you did want to carry some some extra water you do have that option this is the main control for your fridge a uh, little circle there that's off um, your first one there is gas so when you flick it to gas um, <coughs> you then need to come over this side and then hold that button in and you'll hear you you'll hear it ticking away and then as you're holding that in once it ignites that little bar there starts rising up into the green um, once it's moved up into that green strip and sort of has stopped moving you can then let go of that purge button um, and uh, and then that'll go um, but yeah so hold that in and then you've got your igniter over here so click that away that should ignite it on gas once it's ignited that'll start going up and as I said once it's in the green you can let go of that and then that'll uh, that should stay running on gas um, your other option there is 
mains power so as long as your mains power is connected turn it to that and the fridge should run on 240 mains power uh, and then this last option here is a battery option so that's that's currently not wired up um, it's designed that you can run the fridge off your vehicle's battery so off your car uh, while you're traveling the seven pin trailer plug that's on the van at the moment the cable that's attached to that um, actually has extra wires in it so if you did want to run that system you'd need your uh, car and the caravan wired up with a 12 pin plug system um, so it's something like an auto electrician would be able to do for you um, but if you did go that option it's designed that while you're traveling this will just maintain the temperature of the fridge while you're traveling um, it's not powerful enough to cool it down initially so you would need to run it on you know mains power or gas first for you know a few hours at least or or overnight um, you know and then when you're ready to go hook up to your vehicle you know plug your trailer plug in and then you could select that battery option and it just holds the temperature while you're traveling down the road this is your your range top so that lifts up there you've got your three three gas burners at the top um, these all operate the same so you push push them in turn them around to your high flame setting um, hold that in and then down on the oven here is a little igniter um, so click that so this igniter works for those three on the top and your oven um, so once once it's going you can then let go of that and then just adjust your your flame from there and then just turn it back up right there for uh, turning them off the only one thing to remember with the gas top here is just make sure that these uh, wire frames are sort of cool to the touch before you put your glass lid back down um, it has been known in the past that if these have still been quite hot and people have put the glass lid down it has shattered the glass um, so yeah just just make sure you can sort of hold your hand there without it you know wanting to burn you um, and then you can put that glass lid back down this is your grill in your oven uh, so single single knob there but it works um, for both so you've got a grill grill up the top there and your oven underneath and you've a little tray there uh, so to run the grill push it in and turn it to the right and hold that in hit your igniter that should kick into life and then once that's going you can let that go um, and then back there for off for the oven side it's just back around the other way but same again push it in turn and hold it click the igniter once that's going let that go and then you've got you know 140 right around to 240 there um, so you can just adjust that from there um, you're in your oven there so along the back down the bottom there that's your your gas rail for your oven and then that tube at the top here um, that is the one for the grill so under your bed there as you can see lifts up um, so you've got your mains power cable and you've got your lead winder and the winder for your motor mover um, so if you're looking for those that's where they are um, and you've also got your carpets there as well so this is the inside part for your toilet system so that lifts up there you've got your little blue flush button so press that that flushes into the into the bowl there and then down under here um, if I rotate that bowl a bit um, you've got your wee grey lever so push that that opens up into the waste caddy um, and then you, you, know, you can use the blue button to flush everything away um, and then once you're finished slide that back round and that closes off the waste caddy um, it, if you're going to remove the waste caddy on the outside make sure that this is pulled back round this way um, in the closed position it's only designed the waste caddy is only designed to be removed um, with this closed so if you do find it's not coming out just come and check that um, and you'll see there that the the bowl does rotate so if you've got nice long legs you can move that around to uh, to fit in there easily